Somebody once said that the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. When you learn to close, you'll never be broke again. You're single, you're not a good closer. You're an entrepreneur, you got a product. Yeah. People are asking three questions. Who are you? Mm -hmm. What do you have? Mm -hmm. And why should I care? Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. I believe in you, and this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. So today, let's live your best believe life and learn the skills that you need to master for the modern world. Also, if you want to learn from Warren Buffett, Grant Cardone, Les Brown, and other masters, check out my 254 Confidence and 254 Black Excellence series, where every day for the next 254 days, I will send you a morning video for free to help you build your confidence. The link to join is in the description below. It's important to associate with people that are better than yourself. You have to go build self-confidence. It's necessary that you hook up with some other energy that can take you to the next level. I hooked up with them. They said, let's, let's go. I said, away we go. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Be a good public speaker with Warren Buffett. Somebody once said that the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. I had been terrified of public speaking. I couldn't do it, I'd throw up. And I knew if I didn't cure it then, I'd never cure it. And so I so I'd add in the paper for the Dale Carnegie course, which worked on developing your ability to speak in public. And I went down there. Be sincere. A good smile has the same effect as a puppy's tail. When a puppy wags... They made us do all these crazy things to get out of ourselves, and so we stood on tables and did all kinds of things. If I hadn't have done that, my whole life would have been different. So in my office, you will not see the degree I got from the University of Nebraska. You'll not see the master's degree I got from Columbia University, but you'll see the little award certificate I got from the Dale Carnegie course. Rule number two, learn how to close with Dan Locke. If you're struggling in life, you're struggling in business, I can guarantee you the biggest issue, how I've overcome, how I was struggling, how I overcome not want to be broke again, it's I learn to close. I learned to communicate ideas, thoughts, concepts. When you learn to close, you'll never be broke again. Because in business, nothing happens until something is sold. In life, nothing happens until something is sold. You're single, you're not a good closer. You can't close. You're not getting people to do what you want. They're not following your leadership. You can't close. You're not getting sales because you're a lousy closer. You can't close. When you can close, you can move, you can influence, you can persuade people. Everything that you want in life, guess what? Other people already have them. I don't care what it is that you want. Resources, money, capital, influence, relationships. Whatever it is that you want, you gotta close someone else to give it to you. So if you're struggling financially, it means you're a f***ing lousy closer. It is that simple. Well, that's the downside upside is this, once you know how to close, you will know how to create income on demand. You will know how to make money. You have the ability to make money anytime you want. That's the power of closing. That's how you never go broke again. Rule number three, know how to get attention with Grant Cardone. When I started a Twitter account, I had no followers. When I started a Facebook account, no followers. Uh, I was my first follower. When I started an Instagram account, no followers. Um, I didn't know how to post video. I didn't know how to take a selfie. I didn't know how to do any of this, but I did have a commitment to grow in my finances. And if you want to grow your finances, attention is the gateway. You want to go to heaven? Who wants to go to heaven? You got to die. Just telling you, man, you got to die to go to the heaven. And most people don't want to die. They want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. Most people want money, but they're not willing to get the attention. They're not willing to do what it takes to get the attention, including spending money. 
And I would just tell you this, if you want to change your financial condition, the first thing you need to do is go out and market in the marketplace so that you can create a lead and not worry about whether there's ROI or not. It's so stupid that people are like, what's the ROI? Dude, what's the ROI if nobody knows you? Okay, what's the ROI if I don't know your name, don't know your company, don't know what you do, don't know your service, don't know your product, don't know where you're located? What is the ROI, okay? Best product does not win today. The best known product wins. You think Starbucks sells the best coffee? Please, it's nasty. Okay, but it's close. And I know what I'm getting when I get there. McDonald's, they don't sell the best hamburger. Close and available. Rule number four, be a good storyteller with Les Brown. I think most businesses fail. Most brands never make it. Most people never reach their greatness because they don't know how to tell their story. Yes, that's so, major. What will you be sharing with the audience? Because look, man. What if well, you, let me you, just share with you why the story is important. Yes. Why the story is important is because when you speak, if you're selling, yeah. You're an entrepreneur, you got a product, you have an expertise, knowledge is a new currency. Yeah, yeah. People are asking three questions. Who are you? Mm -hmm. What do you have? Mm -hmm. And why should I care? Mm -hmm. And so if you don't answer that, because we know people do who, business with- Who, what, why? Who are you? Yeah. What do you have? And why mm -hmm. should I care? People do business with people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And when you can answer that, mm -hmm. now you're building a rapport and a connection that creates a possibility where you can do business together and help each other go to that next level. Rule number five, learn how to develop good habits with James Clear. One of the phrases I use and I have this in the book is that habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. So it's like the same way that compound interest you know, accrues through finance, your, the effects of your habits multiply over time. And so often these choices that you make, they're these little 1% improvements for you or against you each day, and they're very easy to overlook on a daily basis, right? Like, what, what really is the difference between eating a burger and fries or a salad and chicken for lunch? Mm. You don't really see a, a lot. lot better. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> it tastes that's amazing actually, in the moment. That's actually a crucial point uh, that I cover in the book, which is that habits that are immediately satisfying are more likely to be repeated. And so pretty much any behavior produces multiple outcomes across time, right? Like if you eat a donut right now, it's tasty mm, and sugary. So good. But in the long run, you gain weight. And so the... The immediate outcome is favorable. The long-term outcome is unfavorable. With good habits, it's often the reverse, right? Like you go to the gym right now, and it takes effort, you sweat, you have to work hard. You have so to sacrifice outcome, your time for Netflix and chill to go train. The immediate outcome is unfavorable, but the ultimate outcome, you're in shape in a, you know, a year or a month or whatever, right. is favorable. And so the challenge for building good habits and breaking bad ones is often finding a way to pull the long-term consequences of your bad habits into the immediate moment so you feel a little bit of the pain right now and want to avoid it, and the long-term rewards of your good habits into the immediate moment so that you have a reason to repeat it again in the future. Each behavior casts a vote for the type of person that you want to become. And if you cast enough votes for that type of identity, you start to believe that about yourself, right? Like if you... You go to church for 20 years, you believe that you're religious. You study Spanish every Tuesday for 30 minutes, you believe mm -hmm. that you are studious. Um, so in that way, your habits provide evidence of your desired identity. And I think that that is probably the ultimate reason that habits are so important. It's true, like habits can help you earn more money or be more productive or lose weight. Um, and all that stuff is great. But in addition to the external results that habits provide, they also shape your sense of self. They like are the, the engine or the avenue through which you learn to believe things about yourself. Like sometimes people will say stuff like, fake it till you make it. But fake it till you make it is asking yourself to believe something without evidence for it. And you can do that for a little while, you could do it for a day or a week, but eventually, I mean, there's a word for beliefs that don't have evidence behind them, it's delusion, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're deluding yourself, then eventually you give up on that. But the power of doing a better habit each day or casting a little vote for that type of person is that now you have evidence to root your belief in. Yeah, and so now I've done it for six up, months, yeah. Right? Like, I mean, now you have a lot of evidence that you're a podcaster or a right. good interviewer. You know, like you do this over and over again. Each time you cast a vote for believing that about yourself. And you don't just, you aren't delusionally believing that you're a good interviewer. It's because you've shown up and done it hundreds of times. Right. Um, and so I think that that's true for any habit, large or small. 
that they provide evidence of the desired identity or the, the type of person that you are. Mm. What are the five non-negotiable habits for you on a daily basis? Oh, that's a good question. I think there are a few core habits that are gonna serve everybody and certainly serve me well. So exercise is a huge one. Um, I don't do it daily, but I exercise, I train four times a week. Yeah. And I feel like if I didn't exercise, I don't know that I would be an entrepreneur. Like, I don't know if I could handle the psychological roller coaster without the physical outlet. Yeah, the release, the... You probably feel that as yeah. like an athlete too. You know, like Got I, to. for uh, being an athlete for so many years, I feel like I need to push myself physically in addition to mentally. Absolutely. If it's just mental, <clears throat> it doesn't do it for me. I, I no. need to have a physical outlet. So exercise. Exercise is one. The other, the ultimate meta habit is reading. Because if you build a habit of reading, you can solve pretty much any other problem. You know, you hmm. want to learn how to be a better podcaster, you can read about that. You want to right. learn how to meditate, you can read about that. You want to learn how to make more money, you can read about that. Um, and so what you need is to develop a habit of reading and then whatever problem you're facing at the time, you can you have a method for solving that. Rule number six, master PR and marketing with Robert Kiyosaki. When you look at the big picture, there's three things an entrepreneur must learn. Number one is PR. And what you're talking about is PR. The other, the other day, Fox News interviewed me to find out if I would endorse my friend Donald Trump for president. You know how much that's worth? You know, they, they co-branded us. Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, and Trump. Yeah, that, that's incredibly priceless. You know, so getting PR is a number one skill. So under that is marketing. And what marketing does is like advertising. They want to set the customer up to get ready to buy. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I saw that Kia ad. I, I want to buy a Kia. I want to buy some land. You know, I want to buy this. So the customer is now primed to buy it. That's marketing's job. Then the last thing is a sale. So if you've done a really good job on PR, then you've done a great job on marketing, the sale is like that. You know, they walk in, they buy. But if you have no PR and you have no marketing, you have to pound, pound, pound. Hard close on, well, Mr. Customer, you know, you know, today's changing business environment, you know, you should buy my insurance. And, I'll and people today, hate sales pitches more than ever before. So the number one sales job of a true entrepreneur is develop your ability to get PR. And I'll say it again, most entrepreneurs are not good at sales. They're horrible at marketing. They have no idea what it is. And they can't get any PR. And so they struggle. And again, sales equals income, so they crash. Rule number seven, study philosophy with Yuval Noah Harari. You know, questions like free will, like uh, the meaning of humanity. Philosophers have been discussing this for thousands of years with almost zero impact on the rest <laughs> of humanity because it was most of the time irrelevant. It didn't really matter what you think about these issues. But now these problems are suddenly becoming practical problems of engineering and of politics. So this is the time for the philosophers and the historians and the people in the humanities uh, to go out there and to talk about these issues. It, it's, it is suddenly very, very urgent. Things that weren't very urgent in ancient Athens, they are now extremely urgent. And what you see is that the engineers are taking over. Because uh, philosophers, maybe they are just too patient. Well, we've been debating this for 5,000 years. We can continue to debate it for 5,000 years more. But engineers are impatient. When you design a self-driving car, you can't wait 5,000 years. <laughs> you need to decide ethical questions and philosophical questions now or in the next year or two. Sure, so should these Silicon Valley companies be hiring resident philosophers? Uh, they are doing it or uh, in, in, in different ways, either engineers that reinvent themselves as philosophers, right. or there are some philosophers who are also, in, or at least types of philosophers, who are being hired or, or play a part in this. And um, I think, again, that if you want to study something really practical in the 21st century, philosophy is a good bet. More than ever before, more than many of the other things that, that, that people are studying. There are so many things that AI is going to do better than humans in the, in the coming years. Uh, maybe eventually also philosophy, but this will be one of the last uh, uh, fields to fall to automation. 
And rule number eight, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is master the art of persuasion with Ed Milet. Persuasion at anything. So if you want to persuade your children, if you want to persuade someone to take a look at your faith, if you want to persuade someone in business, if you want to persuade someone to help you in anything or help them in anything, it's real simple for me. Monster belief. And so you can't transfer to me that which you're not experiencing yourself, right? So you can't give me that. People are always trying to come up with a magic word, the magic clothes, the magic this. And there are words you should and shouldn't use in persuasion, no question about it, right? There are, think, there are words that are more effective than other words. And clearly, to be successful in any business, you need to know what those words are in your business. But the best persuaders, the best motivators, the best speakers, the best physicians, the best school teachers, the best parents are incredible persuaders. And what they do is they come from a monster place of conviction and belief that they can transfer you to because people respond to energy much more than they do words. They respond to what they feel, not what they hear and see. Hear and see are real low-level influencers. Energy, spirit, transfer of energy is what people respond to. And so I'm cognizant all the time of getting in a state of total belief and certainty about what it is that I'm going to represent or speak on if I'm speaking on stage about a particular topic and then transferring that energy into people. And that seems generic or hokey, but it's actually what great persuaders do. In fact, if you're listening to this, you think of anybody that you know who's incredibly persuasive. They may have great words, they probably do, but it's something you feel from them, right? And that's the difference between a great doctor and a so-so doctor. A great doctor says, here's the prescription, you're out of here. Another one- Is they, this gonna work or not? Right? I don't know. Yeah. Another one, you leave there feeling that you're going to be healed, yeah. feeling you're in good hands. You feel their certainty, you feel their confidence. Same when you hear a speaker, if you're buying real estate from somebody, but it's not just buying things, it's a, a great pastor in a church. A great person, if you do TM, who's taught you TM, it's their certainty, it's the energy you feel. And so for me, it's always getting to, I have to really believe what I'm saying. I have to really feel it to transfer it to. Now I've got a really special bonus clip with Warren Buffett that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Time to move from just watching another video to actually taking action in your life or your business. And if you're feeling bold, leave your answers in the comments below. Here we go. Question number one, what's the most important skill that you need to master from this list? Number two, who can you learn from to model success and learn quickly? And number three, what are you gonna do today to take immediate action? People ask me what they should take in business school and, and, and uh, uh, or even if they don't go to business school, what they need to know before getting in business. And I tell them, you know, you have to, you have to understand accounting. It's the language, I mean, it, it would be, it's like being in a foreign country without knowing the language if you're in business and you don't understand accounting. So it, 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 you, you want to get as comfortable with that uh, as you are with the English language. It, it, it's made me uh, uh, a lot of money because I, I listened to what Ray Dean had to say 53 or 4 years ago and have been able to understand uh, what I was seeing on pieces of paper what that told me about businesses and the limitations of what it told me about businesses. If you wanna know the 10 skills that you need to develop to be rich, check out the video right next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Without the ability to influence and persuade, yeah. you, can't, you can't put yourself out there into the world and be known for what you really are.